Oh, fish on, fish on the fly. Woo, trolling fly, baby. Oh, that's a nice fish. See, I'm, I'm about I'm about 10 yards from Wes here and he's got all kinds of cables and drama down. I'm gonna, I'm going away from him. <laughs> of course, I got this fish on the weak side. We've talked about that a good amount. I always seem to hook the nice fish on the weak side. So I'm gonna get the net ready. Bite the fish with my pedals for a second here. He's still a ways away. I had out uh, three colors, and this is my rod with the 60 foot top shot. So that fish is a good distance away, and I have a worm rolling on three color. Ooh, some head shaking going on there. I got a worm down about 25 feet on my other lead core rod, so kayak control is utmost right now. Running two lead core rods at once is always a challenge, but uh, it's worth it, especially on a day like this when the bite's a little tough. You want to work the water column. You want to try some different things, so. He is bad. We're pulling a little drag. Battler. Okay, I'm into the top shot now. Always well, exciting. When you, first time you see him, you just don't know what you got. Ooh, man, he feels heavy. Come on, baby. Oh, nice fish. Oh yeah, woo! Right there. Nice fish, that's three pounds, easy. Yeah, baby. Right there, look at that. Whoa. Look at that chunk. Man, that's a nice fish. What do you think, Lucy? <laughs> Lucy's never sure what to think about. That is a nice fish. I'll get him on the stringer, and uh, man, we're getting it done today. It is not easy, but uh, we are absolutely getting it done. Man, I'm, I'm super pumped. That is a nice rainbow right there. Great. On the trolling fly. I mean, you can't beat those flies. Trolling fly, the lead core, getting it done. There it is, shad pattern fly. Um, Threadfin shads are the predominant forage out here at Collins Lake. We we're running this shad pattern fly at about 15 feet and the rest is history, man. That was a fine rainbow. I can't wait to get another one. We get this fly back in the water, get all my tackle straightened up and uh, continue trolling. Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. That's what trolling flies can do. You think trolling flies don't work? Well, think again. You need to grab a set of my trolling flies get out on the water and get ready to go big ah <laughs> yes howdy folks cal kellogg here well, that big beautiful trout you saw me catch in the opening of this video that was up at collins lake about 10 days ago now and uh, i caught that fish on a trolling fly in fact i caught him on that trolling fly right there i haven't changed it out yet because i haven't been fishing anywhere else so I've been getting quite a few questions lately from guys that have bought my trolling fly kits and uh, they're just looking for tips, they're looking for pointers on, on how to fish the flies, when to fish the flies, stuff like that. They're, they just want to talk basic strategy. So I'm going to title this, this video, Trolling Flies. When, why, and how. And uh, I'm going to try to keep it kind of short. I'm going to going to quickly hit on some points I usually hit on when I'm talking about trolling flies, but that information can be accessed on the channel elsewhere if you want a more in-depth kind of look. But uh, let's think about trolling flies. First, first and foremost, I'm going to say you see me catch a lot of big fish on trolling flies. Part of the reason is I've established such a high level of confidence in the flies themselves. And uh, I guess, I guess why is a good place to start. Why do I have confidence? And, and let me show you a couple things. Let's, uh, you know, kind of, kind of put yourself in the fish's, in the fish's, uh, in the fish's shoes, so to speak. If, if, if trout wore shoes, let's say you are a, uh, let's say you're a big rainbow, okay? And you're up at Lake Shasta. It's a big open water bait fish lake. Um, there's, there's shad in there. Certainly. Trout in there feed on bugs, they feed on crawfish, but primarily they feed on shad, okay? So say you're a, a five pound rainbow and you've been in Shasta for a couple years and uh, you're loving life and you're eating shad. How many times 
Do you think you would have seen a, uh, you know, a standard, I think this is a number seven, silver and black Rapala? A dozen times, a hundred times. Every trout fisherman that I know has this lure in their tackle box. They also have this lure right here. A quarter ounce Castmaster. Very good imitation of a threadfin shad, but if you're a trout that lives in Shasta, a big experienced trout, you've seen Castmasters like these dozens of times. Maybe you took a swipe at one and, you know, kind of kind of didn't get hooked, or maybe you got hooked a little bit. Bottom line is, you've built up a history, you've built up some experience, and now, you know, during a red hot bite, they will grab this. But if the bite's a little off, they're not really actively feeding, they see that cast master, they see that Rapala, and they're like, eh, no, no, I don't think that's what I want to hit. They might follow it, but they don't hit it, okay? Now, let's put this in the mix. A rabbit hair trolling fly. Now, how often do you think that same rainbow sees one of these? He's probably never seen one in his entire life. So, all of a sudden, you're presenting the fish with something that they're not familiar with. I don't have the exact statistical numbers, but I'll give you a quick example of what I'm talking about. Back at the Berkeley factory, back when I used to be in Spirit Lake, Iowa, um, they had this circular tank. They would take bass crankbaits and they would drag them through the tank where bass lived. And uh, they, they, they would drag them through until every bass in the tank had hit those crankbaits. So they kind of had a baseline of how, how long it takes for the fish to initially hit the crankbait when they encountered it the first time. They took the bass out of the tank and they kept them in, in smaller tanks for a period of weeks. Weeks, not hours, not days, weeks. They put the bass back in the tank and they pulled the same lure through the water. And I wanna say it was about a 50% decrease in the number of strikes. So one exposure to that lure, those bass not only learned that it wasn't something to eat, they learned that information and they held on to that information. So my theory on flies is and why they're so effective and why they're so effective for catching big fish is there's not a lot of guys pulling them and you're presenting the fish with something that they are unfamiliar with as opposed to you know the old tried and true rapala so that's my theory on why when couple couple aspects of when i fish flies first of all i fish them when i think there's big trout around now collins lake I know there's 10 pound trout in there. They may be planters. They may be out of the truck. They're big, okay? Sugar Pine Reservoir, that we'll use that for the contrast. There are no big trout in there. There might be a 14 inch rainbow out of a truck in there, but there aren't seven, eight, 10 pound planters in there. It's not Lake Almanor where there's seven, eight, nine, 10 pound wild rainbows in the lake. So Sugar Pine, I'm not gonna put on this three and a half inch long rabbit hair fly. It's too big for the situation. There's no big fish in there that are gonna hit it. But at Collins Lake, at Shasta, at Elmanor, at Davis, yeah, I bust out the trolling flies. So that's partially, you know, the answer to the when question. The other part of it is it comes down to speed. Typically, I start out trolling fast. You know, most of the time, I'm gonna start out with some kind of hardware, maybe a plug, maybe a maglip, something like that, and I'm gonna see if there's active, aggressive fish around. Now, if I'm getting hit with those lures that I control fast, maybe I'm pulling one of my speed spoons, maybe I'm, I'm starting out at 2.7, I'm bouncing it up to 3.5, I'm kind of playing with different locations and different depths. If I can catch fish with that presentation, I'm gonna stick with it. But if I have to slow down to medium or slow speeds, I'm gonna reach for a fly a lot of times if I think there's big fish around. Because flies, they perform best at anywhere from about 2.2 in my opinion, maybe a little faster, all the way down to one mile an hour. And I'm talking about flies paired with the, uh, with the action disc, just like that. The disc gives the flies tremendous action at those speeds from, from one mile an hour, you know, all the way up to 2.2, 2.4. Um, that is another aspect of why fish hit flies. Not only do they not see them very often, but when you pair them with that wiggle disc, you get a very unique type of, 
of vibration and shudder in the fly that you just don't get with, with any other bait that I am familiar with. So let's talk a little bit about the how. So why do they work? The big fish don't see them very often. When do I use them? I use them when, when, when I think there's big fish around and I want to slow down my presentation, but I still want to stick with something fairly substantial, something that looks like a substantial meal to a big fish. And you know me, you see me catch a lot of pan-sized trout here on the channel, but rarely am I going out and, and saying to myself, other than maybe sugar pine, stuff like that, I'm going to go out today and I'm going to catch a bunch of small trout. No, I'm going out and I, I catch some small trout, but I'm always, you know, swinging for the fences. I always want a big fish and I just know, and uh, you know, I've seen it so many times, I have a high level of confidence now. I know when I've got a big fly like that on the line, my chances of hooking a big fish if I encounter one are pretty darn good. If I can get a big fish that's actively feeding or even in a neutral kind of a mindset, I throw a fly on like that and show it to that fish, I got a really good chance of hooking up. Now, how do you fish them? I always get these questions from guys, you know, um, do I fish them with dodgers? Do I fish them with flashers? Can I fish them off downriggers? Um, last question first. Yes, you can fish them very effectively off downriggers, and I approach fishing the fly the same way, whether I'm fishing it 101 feet deep. That was my deepest fly strike last year up at Shasta. I got a nice, like, three-pound rainbow on a pink and uh, white trolling fly, one of my trolling flies with the lead eyes on it. Um, I was trolling that at, at 101 feet up in the Silverthorn area, up in Silverthorn Bay, actually, when that fish hit. And, you know, it was the best, it was best fish of the trip when we were up there in September, me and my wife. But anyway, here's my basic rig. This is my lead core rig. I troll flies a lot off a of lead core. Um, if, if the fish are holding anywhere from the surface to 30 feet deep, lead core all day long, super effective. I can already tell you, if I was at Elmanor right now, I would drop this fly down 10 to 15 feet. I would troll it at 1.8 miles an hour. That's how I would start. I would work that area by the dam and I would be trolling with a high level of confidence. So anyway, here's how we rig up. Here's how I rig up. My main line, my main line, my main line comes down, I go through a bead right here. The bead serves absolutely no purpose other than for me to be able to see where the swivel is because I'm old and blind and a lot of times I'm fishing in low light conditions. So the bead, it helps me see where that, that junction with the, with the swivel is. I don't want to reel it up into the eyes of the rod. It also helps collect weeds a little bit if I'm in a situation where there's some weeds. Anyhow, I bring that down to a multi-link trolling swivel to prevent line twists. Got a snap on the end. From that snap, I run a 48 inch fluorocarbon leader down to the fly. I tie directly, well I put the wiggle disc on first, then I tie directly to the fly using a Pelomar knot. Um, I've gone down as light as eight pound test, didn't really like it. At this point, I fish 10 and 12 pound test on my leader exclusively. Um, some folks have asked me whether I see a breakage problem with fluorocarbon. Maybe, I know it's out there, but honestly, I'm not gonna leave a fly rigged long enough to have a breakage issue with 12 pound test fluorocarbon. Um, I, I think the, uh, the invisibility factor is much more important than the breakage issue. And uh, when I'm going, you know, for big experienced fish, I want that invisibility. I would encourage you to use fluorocarbon on your leaders. And if you're having, you know, any reservations, retie. Retie a fresh leader rather than pulling your flies on mono or downsizing your mono to four pound test or something like that. You're just asking to lose a big fish. You get a big fish. I remember the first really big fish I caught on a fly. This is a pretty good example. Um, seven pound rainbow at uh, Lake Elmanor. I wish I had had my cameras configured in a different way, but I was just kind of kind of starting out the way that I film now. And, and long story short, I didn't have my, my, my cameras configured so you could see the, the long shot of the kayak. Bottom line is the fish made several runs under the kayak and totally rubbed the hole. This is when I gotten the fish close and he was starting to wear out. Um, at another point in the fight he jumped over the, the, the nose of the kayak and immediately dove underneath the kayak. Um, I know my leader was rubbing the kayak. If I'd have been running four pound test mono 
Maybe I land a fish, maybe I don't. But I was running 10 pound test Vanish fluorocarbon that day. Right now I'm running 12 pound test um, Yozuri top knot fluorocarbon. So if I get a big fish on like that, that's fighting hard, maybe rubbing some rocks in the water, maybe rubbing the underside of the boat, underside of the kayak, whatever, high level of confidence. Remember, set yourself up for success. If you're running around trolling on four pound test, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Works great on those pan sized trout, but what happens when you catch that eight pound trout and things aren't going exactly your way and things are never going your way when uh, you have a big fish at the end of the line, man. That's, that's what it's all about. It's, ex it's exciting, they test your gear and anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Um, and uh, I'll leave you with a quote on that, but just let me review. When do I use flies? When the situation calls for a, a big bait, I think there's big fish around and I wanna troll kind of medium to slowly. Why do they work? It's a presentation fish don't see a whole lot. How do I fish them? I fish them naked on a leader. I, I, I rarely use you know flashers or dodgers or any of that stuff. I just rely on the wiggle disc. This is a very natural presentation. Getting back to losing big fish. I was up on the uh, Umpqua River. This is probably 12 years ago now. Um, I recently started to fish near from my old boss, Alan Bonslet. He's like, let's go to the Umpqua this January. Let's catch some steelhead. Okay, we get up there. First fish Alan hooks is ginormous. What do I know? I don't know anything. I've never fished the Umpqua. Maybe they're all that size. So we're fighting to fish. We're with Scott Wolf. He's our guide. And uh, at some point during this fight, the fish runs up under all these tree branches and stuff on the river. I says, Scott, are you worried about losing this fish? And he's, he's just dead serious. He's all, when a guy's got a trophy like that on, I I'm worried the entire time because big fish like that, they just have a way of getting away. Well, bottom line, Alan got the, got the fish to the boat. We got it into the net. It was a 17 pound steelhead. But I'll always remember what Scott said. And I've experienced the same thing. When you've got a big fish on your line, you want everything you know going your way as much as possible. Preparation's the key, because when you got that big fish on there, anything that can go wrong will go wrong and you're going to be left with nothing but a sad story so anyway that's all i got for now trolling flies they are deadly super deadly on big fish um fish don't see them they will put more and bigger fish in your boat or kayak i guarantee it and uh, if you're looking for some high quality trolling flies there aren't a ton of sources out there you can find them elsewhere but i would strongly encourage you to go over to the fish hunt shoot production store Grab one of my kits, you're going to get the flies, you're going to get the wiggle discs, and get out on the water. Get out on the water, get yourself some experience, learn how to use the flies, and you're never going to look back because they outproduce spoons, they outproduce plugs in many, many situations. Anyway, that's all I got to see. If you want to know how effective flies are, you just need to look no further than the videos on this channel. I'm Kel Kellogg. I will catch you guys later. Please hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and I sincerely want to thank you guys for all the support you've given the channel over the years. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing this, and we are having a fantastic time. Looking forward to the spring season, which is right around the corner. We're going to be out on the water, and I know I'm going to catch some really big trout. I'll catch you later. You have a great day. I'm Kel Kellogg.